Good afternoon, and welcome to Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. These organ concerts are streamed live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing on the Tabernacle Choir's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And you can find out more information about this concert series at tabchoir.org slash piping up. You may have guessed from our opening theme music that today's episode of Piping Up is a little different. The music we just heard was the Meditation on a Theme by Alexander Schreiner, composed by Darwin Wolford. The theme was one that Schreiner improvised for a weekly radio program of organ music that he presented and narrated himself for many years, titled Sunday Evening on Temple Square. In this episode of Piping Up, we pay tribute to the legendary organist Alexander Schreiner, who served as a tabernacle organist for more than 50 years and was really one of this country's great musical icons. And we're delighted that today's organists on Piping Up are two of Schreiner's own students, Emeritus Tabernacle Organists John Longhurst and Clay Christiansen. We begin with a work that takes us right back to Schreiner's early studies with Louis Vienne in Paris, which began in 1925. A quarter century earlier, in 1899, Vienne composed his solemn mass in C-sharp minor for choir and two organs. He would have written it for choir and orchestra, but his teacher, Charles-Marie Vidor, pointed out that using two organs was a more practical solution, especially since the Church of Saint-Sulpice, where it was premiered, had two organs, the great organ at the back of the church and a choir organ near the altar, where the choir sang. At the premiere of this mass, Vidor played the main organ and Vienne played the choir organ. Alexander Schreiner transcribed for solo organ the Kyrie from Vienne's solemn mass and titled it simply Maestoso. Today, John Longhurst will perform this Maestoso using the Tabernacle Organ's antiphonal division, located 200 feet from the main organ case at the back of the tabernacle, to replicate the original effect of Vienne's two organ accompaniment in the Church of Saint Sulpice.
Alexander Schreiner composed numerous hymns, sacred songs, and arrangements. It's remarkable that someone who had at his fingers command some of the greatest musical works of past centuries didn't think it beneath him at all to compose a simple tune for a little two-line verse in a children's songbook, which he did many times and always elegantly. Nine of Shriner's hymn settings are in the current Latter-day Saint hymnal, including Thy Spirit, Lord, Has Stirred Our Souls, originally written for the 1948 hymnal. We'll hear that hymn tune next, arranged by Robert Kundick, another of Shriner's students who served for many years as a tabernacle organist. That will be followed by Shriner's delightful hunting horn scherzo, which he improvised at first. It was captured on recording in 1965, and at least four organists have collaborated over the years on transcribing a practical performance edition of the piece. Of course, Schreiner himself played it a little differently every time, making the transcriber's work all the more challenging. John Longhurst will now play Robert Kundick's arrangement of Thy Spirit, Lord, Has Stirred Our Souls, followed by Schreiner's Hunting Horn Scherzo.
In late July of 1929, Alexander Schreiner appeared with the Tabernacle Choir on his first broadcast of music and the spoken word. It was episode number three. By the time Schreiner retired in 1977, the choir's signature broadcast had racked up more than 2,500 episodes. And for 2,000 of those episodes, the narrator and host was Richard L. Evans. The 40-year partnership of Evans and Schreiner was legendary and firmly established this celebrated program as a Sunday tradition for millions of listeners and viewers. One particular Sunday morning, Evans turned to Schreiner in the middle of a broadcast and said he had miscalculated the timing and was two and a half minutes short. He asked if Schreiner could fill in with something and of course the organist said yes. Evans asked what it would be and Schreiner replied characteristically, I don't know. He then improvised for two and a half minutes. Afterward, Schreiner listened to the recording, wrote it down, and it was published in 1960 as his lyric interlude, by far his best known composition. We'll hear it now, performed by Tabernacle Organist Emeritus and a former student of Schreiner's, Clay Christiansen.
The pioneer hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, has been played on almost every episode of Piping Up so far, and it's been heard at the daily organ recitals on Temple Square for more than a century. But for much of that time, Come, Come Ye Saints alternated on the recitals with another 19th century hymn, O My Father. And many listeners will recognize this hymn tune composed by James McGranahan through its long-standing connection with the words, I will sing of my Redeemer by Philip Bliss. In Latter-day Saint hymnals beginning in the 1890s, it has more frequently been used as the setting for Eliza R. Snow's 1845 poem, O My Father. Alexander Schreiner must have performed his arrangement of O My Father hundreds of times on those recitals and he recorded it for his 1960 album of organ music for the Columbia Masterworks label. But he didn't write it down, so it was left to the current principal tabernacle organist, Richard Elliott, and Shriner's grandson, Christopher Johnson, to transcribe this arrangement of Oh My Father, the other traditional hymn from the regular tabernacle organ recitals. We'll hear Oh My Father now, performed by Clay Christiansen, who will follow it with his own transcription of Schreiner's arrangement of O Columbia, the Gem of the Ocean. In 1976, when Clay was looking for patriotic organ solos to help celebrate the American bicentennial, Schreiner suggested this arrangement, which he had made some years earlier for choir and orchestra. He thought it might be turned into an effective organ solo. Clay worked on the transcription and has been playing it ever since.
Sometimes it's not immediately apparent how much discipline, training and determination lies behind the seemingly effortless virtuosity of genius. There's a popular story, probably apocryphal, about the renowned Spanish painter Pablo Picasso that illustrates this principle. One version of the story goes something like this. Picasso was dining in a restaurant and began doodling absent-mindedly on a napkin. One of the other diners, recognizing the world-famous artist, approached Picasso and asked if she might have that napkin, which otherwise would have been picked up by the wait staff and probably thrown away. Picasso replied, certainly, for 40,000 francs. The customer protested, but it took you only a few minutes. Picasso replied, no, madam, it took a lifetime. So it was with Alexander Schreiner. Audiences marveled at his playing, his skill at improvisation, the facility of his technique, and his complete artistry. It was as if he could make the organ do anything he wished it to, and what he wished it to do was always perfect and right in the moment. In 1926, after Schreiner completed his studies in France, Louis Vien wrote an enthusiastic letter of recommendation that effused about Schreiner's effortless mastery of technique, his perfect musicianship, and eminently artistic nature. He predicted that Schreiner would enjoy an enviable place among virtuosos and make a great impression on the public. And of course, all that was true. But most people outside of Schreiner's circle didn't see the thousands of hours of practice, the multiple jobs playing the organ at churches, movie theaters, department stores, and campuses across the United States in order to pay bills and repay debts. For nine years, Schreiner divided his time between summers in Utah, performing in the Salt Lake Tabernacle, and winters at UCLA, where he gave recitals and taught music classes to the college students there. Even though he had taught music at university, Alex Schreiner hadn't completed any formal college coursework himself. So when he started full-time work as a tabernacle organist in 1939, he also started his own university studies, earning his bachelor's degree just before his 41st birthday. He was in his early 50s when he received his doctorate. Throughout his career, Schreiner never stopped learning never ceased from the largely unseen, diligent work of practice. And because of that, a particular gesture at the organ, a flourish, a spectacular musical moment could come off so naturally. It wasn't created in that moment, though. It was the accumulated work of a lifetime. Few of us will ever be able to paint like a Picasso or play the organ like Alexander Schreiner. But in our own spheres, whatever they may be, we can also strive for the same level of excellence and edification. When we commit our works unto the Lord, as Schreiner did, then God promises our lifetimes of diligent effort will accumulate, and our thoughts, our goals, our aspirations will become, as the King James Version puts it, established. We will arrive at the point where doing good becomes second nature, or more accurately, our truer divine nature we can become virtuosos of virtue. And like Picasso's napkin, those seemingly small acts of compassion and service to others will indeed be of tremendous value, though in this case beyond price. We'll see the fruits of Alexander Schreiner's lifetime of hard work and practice now as we rebroadcast for you archival footage of Schreiner at the tabernacle organ playing the final movement, Allegro Assai Vivace, from the Organ Sonata No. 1 by Felix Mendelssohn.
Alexander Schreiner's legacy lives on, not just in the music he wrote, transcribed or arranged, or even in the recordings he left us. It lives on in this instrument, in the noble traditions he instituted and reinforced in this space, in the tabernacle organists that followed after him, and it lives in his offering of wholehearted service and devotion through music to his faith and his God. We hope you enjoyed today's special episode of Piping Up with John Longhurst and Clay Christiansen at the Tabernacle Organ in Salt Lake City. Thank you for watching. You are always welcome to come back for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square, streams every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website, its Facebook page and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.